personal. It's personal between me and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing game is missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, this is the official Diego Pacheco versus Manuel Gallegos post fight review, and the result of the fight is a devastating, uh, thorough, ass whooping. Just Diego Pacheco outclassing and ultimately stopping. Manuel Gallegos in four rounds. So let's let's talk about it and let's dissect, man, because you look at Diego Pacheco. He's one of the very few fighters in boxing where we've had a chance to see Diego Pacheco from the start, from the beginning of his journey, from when he made his pro debut on the Gaio Estrada Rung Versai rematch undercard. He was a kid back then. I think he was like 17, maybe 18 years old. Young, young, young kid. And now he, you see his voice getting deeper, you know, and he's, and he's maturing into a man. And um, as far as the fight, you know, Gallegos was a guy that had never been stopped in over 20 professional fights. Been in there with some some good fighters, you know, de decent level, not, you know, the highest level, but a decent level opposition. Veteran fighter. And uh, listen, he brought the fight to Pacheco. He, it was what we thought it was going to be. He brought the fight right to Diego Pacheco. But like, as the great 50 Cent once said, you know, like in boxing, when a fighter throws punches to questions and the person who has more answers is the one getting the hand in the race at the end. And, that, and that's what happened. Pacheco, for all the pressure that Gallegos brought, you know, Pacheco, whether he was, you know, when, when Gallegos brought the pressure and Pacheco was on the ropes, a lot of the times he'll land the, the, the counter left hook, um, sometimes the straight right hand over the top. And it was very interesting to see Pacheco get a look against somebody that's just as tall as him because Pacheco, like, like I said in my, my video, uh, going into the fight for this fight, like, he's six foot four. He's NBA shooting guard, you know, height, damn near. And um, Gallegos is probably one of the only guys that meets eye to eye with them in, in the super middleweight division. So um, I thought he handled the height really well, and, and, and he just picked his punches real nicely. Uh, when he was on the back foot, he had he had counters. When he was on the front foot, he had counters. When Gallegos smothered him and, and started pressuring him, and, and, and he, he kind of held his ground and, and held a nice, tight, high guard very, very well. So overall, if you're someone like myself who has been banging the, the Diego Pacheco drum and bandwagon, uh, for for number of years now, this is the kind of a performance that you wanted to see because nobody has done that to Manuel Gallegos, and um, he showed levels tonight, and um, you know, just a great performance from him. Um, in the fourth round, he hit him with a with a liver shot, a body shot that stopped him. Gallegos showed a lot of heart and a lot of determination and a lot of gumption to get up, and um, Pacheco folded him up in the fourth round. So Pacheco. Does it again, and Pacheco looks like he's going to uh, be getting his headlining fight in L.A. Because we've been hearing Eddie Hearn talk about him headlining in L.A. real soon, being that he's an L.A. native, South Central, stand the hell up. And um, Eddie Hearn pretty much was saying, and you know, he was speaking to the lovely and equally talented Sofia Gutierrez. But uh, Eddie Hearn was talking about basically um, Pacheco and what could be next for him at 168. Now, obviously, he wants Pacheco to fight for a world title. We know the belts right now are all tied with Canelo, so I don't know how that's gonna work. But um, you know, there's some big fights for Pacheco, you know, Edgar Belanga most notably. But he said that before he moves into a, like an Edgar Belanga fight or even a Munguia or anything like that, that basically like he wants Pacheco to fight one more uh, credible top 15 guy. So let's let apart from Belanga, let's take a, take a quick look at the at the landscape of uh, 168 and see who Pacheco could fight next because I, I think it's worth talking about. But oh. oh, oh all together, just uh, an amazing performance tonight. So, 168. Uh, okay, so some names that stick out here that I think are realistic um, opponents for Pacheco. Uh, you got Zach Parker at number 13. He's a British fighter. Eddie Hearn. He's not an Eddie Hearn fighter, but Eddie Hearn has um, worked with Zach Parker. You know, uh, John Ryder, who is an Eddie Hearn fighter, fought on him. Frank Warren promotion. Maybe Parker, who's coming off of a loss to Ryder, gets a chance to kind of, you know, fight the young prospect on the way back. Could be a good fight there. I, I see that as realistic. Um, John Ryder. You know, John Ryder is a guy that just fought Canelo. I feel like John Ryder would be a step up and a half, actually, over, over Gallegos. Because Ryder, you know, when it comes to credibility and durability and just who the, who the top guys are at 68, you know, apart from, you know, Andrade or Canelo or Morel or any of those kind of guys, you know, you look at John Ryder as one of those top kind of guys, and um, you know, 
Bektin Melikuziev's another one. Melikuziev's a guy that had a lot of a hype a couple years ago. And um, Gabe Rizzato knocked him out. And then he gets Avengers lost to Gabe Rizzato this past April on the Ryan Garcia tank undercard. So, look, Pacheco's got options. Um, those are the three I, I'd see. If we're looking at guys in the top 15 who, who aren't champions that have fought for or are aligned with the zone and Matt Schumer, Eddie Hearn, anyway, those are the three names I'm seeing. So, um, yeah, ultimately, look. Uh, precision punching at its finest. You know, when, when, when you look at a lot of these prospects these days in boxing, sometimes a lot of these um, these prospects, they fall victim to the, the Money Mayweather effect where, you know, they, they're, they're, they're so defensively sound that they don't throw any punches when, and, and they don't really like to go the extra mile to, 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 to show that they're better than their opponent when they should do that, right? But Pacheco... Every time you put him in there with somebody who is inferior competition, he treats them as such, and that's always a good sign for a, for a, a young prospect. So he, I didn't think he'd get Gallegos out of there in four rounds, but I thought he would stop him. I thought you know he definitely had the precision and the combination punching and the smarts to do it. But um, you know I, I liked his composure. That the, the main positive I'm taking from this fight for Pacheco is the fact that when Gallegos did close the gap and did make things a bit tough on Pacheco. Um, he was able to maintain the composure in that high guard and not really get hit with too much. So, um, yeah, I mean, right now, my my prediction of three, almost four years ago of, of Diego Pacheco being Eddie Hearn's first, like, homegrown, matchroom, USA, American world champion. That's Right now, that's on, that's on, that's on track. He's the closest out of, all, out of that original crop to winning a world title. You know, he's you because know, Mark Castro's got a lot of work to do. Emma Williams got work to do. Uh, Ofa Jones is pretty much out the picture right now, so it's like, yeah, that's that's that's, that's he's he's in a great position. So um, yeah, great performance from Diego Pacheco. Looking forward to a, a, a you know a, a great homecoming fight. His next fight probably against one of the three names I mentioned. I would say Zach Parker, um, you know John Ryder, um, Bektiem Malakuzi. I'm looking at them three names right there. Those are all names I think are realistic. But uh, let me know who you guys think. Who do you guys think Pacheco will fight next? Um, I don't think we're getting Berlanga next because Eddie Hearn said he wants someone in the top 15 that's not Berlanga or like a Munguia. So, you know, they're going to want to bring a, a big fight to uh, L.A. for Pacheco because he's really... He's done his thing. He went to, he went to the U.K. He fought Jack Collin, destroyed Jack Collin in four rounds. Went to Mexico, destroyed Manuel Gallegos in four rounds. So, back-to-back -back fourth round stoppages for uh, South Central's finest, Diego Pacheco. So, uh, yeah, l let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. What are you making of the whole development of Diego Pacheco? Uh, leave a comment down below. Make sure you guys... Take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just kidding from doing it. So until next time, take your eyes. Thank you for watching another video on the Untouchable True Sports Empire. We're here at the Hatanaka Boxing Gym in Nagoya, Japan. And uh, more great videos just like this one, make sure you guys click right here.